Hello Zimbabwe. Thank you for tuning in and a warm welcome to our program Labor Matters, a platform we discuss several labor dynamics that affect the workplace and the nation at large. And I am Brenna Chinyoa, your host. In our today's episode, we are going to be discussing the state relevance and future of trade unions in Zimbabwe. With me in the studio, to my right, is Mr. Request Machimbira, the CEO of PCG International. To my left is Mr. Peter Mtasa, the president of ZCTU. Uh, to my guest, welcome to the program. Thank you, Brenaud. Welcome, mm -hmm. viewers. OK. Uh, before we get to the heart of uh, the discussion, let me first uh, try to establish a, a, a common bond, let's say a, a common working ground. Right? So uh, what are trade unions all about? What are these things? Trade unions are independent organizations formed by workers voluntarily to champion their interests and rights to protect their social, economic, and political rights. All right, fine. Uh, Mr. Machimbira, uh, do we agree on this definition of what unions are? Yeah, basically, that is what it is. They are created to advance the rights and interest of workers in the workplace. But I think it's also important to appreciate the context, the legislative context that gives birth to trade unions. Okay, okay. Uh, allow me at this point to say, uh, as a government, Zimbabwe has ratified the convention on the right to freedom of association. The same convention goes on to say the right to freedom of association also incorporates the obligations to improve working conditions and also to create peace. All right, thank you so much. Uh, to my understanding, uh, the employment relationship is made up uh, by two parts. That is the employer and the employee. So where do trade unions come in in this relationship? I think uh, we must look at it from the perspective that unions were formed by workers who wanted to further their interests. The legislative part came later. So the trade unions come into the workplace out of the desire of workers to improve their working conditions, to improve their um, uh, health and suffet, to improve uh, their earnings. So the employment, the relationship uh, is bordered on that um, interest uh, of workers and uh, the interests of the employer and uh, then uh, how do we bargain together for the mutual benefit of all of us. All right, but uh, from uh, your, your response, Mr. Mtasa, mm -hmm. are you trying to say the employer doesn't want to, uh, to pay the employees? Is not concerned about the, well, uh, the welfare of what of these employees? The, that's a philosophical argument. And in my view, history has shown that um, employers' interests are different from workers' interests. Yeah. And uh, though we are surviving on one organization, but the interests are quite diverse. And workers generally in the individual capacity, they can't uh, match the political power, the financial power of an employer. So they need to collectively come together and also exert a political power in demanding certain rights and interests. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Machimbira, uh, do you really see uh, the, uh, the relevance of trade unions in the employment relationship? Part of uh, the explanation by Mr. Mtasa is, is the real reason why there's a problem between labor and capital. Okay, so oh, you're already saying I, their existence is already causing a problem. <laughs> it's not to do with yes. their existence. Okay. It's to do with the understanding and, they, and how they locate themselves. In okay. the relationship between the employee yes. and the employer. So basically and, and if yes. you are to go to the to his explanation, yes. he is saying the interests are different. And and that's where the so problem the, 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 that's where okay. the problem is. All right. Every organization, regardless of its totem, is okay. created to drive the productivity agenda. All right. A and once you miss that, all right you are naturally bound to begin to experience problems. Okay. Maybe so until before we go, we go there, Mr. Yes. Machimbira, okay. so are we agreeing on the fact that trade unions are necessary? Because you have uh, mentioned the issue of having divergent interests at the workplace. 
They are necessary, but they must understand the purpose that gives them necessity. Oh, there's a but. <laughs> there is a purpose that gives them necessity. Okay. And if, and if they miss that point, okay. then they become if a functionalist <laughs> structure, a structure which is just there okay. to be maintained. I am very polite. I am. <laughs> I am shy of saying irrelevant. <laughs> may, may I, may I add okay. The, 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 to the discussion, this okay. dimension. Okay. It's like uh, in a um, uh, Premier Soccer League. Okay. Every team that is formed is formed to play um, uh, fairly and uh, friendly to yes. every other team. Yeah. Yeah. But each team has got an objective. You can't form an organization to further another org another person's organization's objectives. So we form okay. trade unions. Basically, the princi principal um, uh, goal yes. is to defend the workers' rights. And it has been seen that throughout the history, starting from um, slavery to the uh, uh, bad uh, workplaces in industrialization of Europe, up to the colonial era in Zimbabwe, trade unions have been playing a very important role but that role is primarily to safeguard the interests and the rights of workers. Well, well that, that actually sounds an interesting point. I think I will pick up that on that one later. But uh, let's first go back to this issue. You are talking about defending the rights. Do we have in any instance where the employer was actually abusing those rights? Because for you, to, how can you come to the institution to defend something that is already actually at the disposal of the employees? Trade unions were not formed in civilized uh, states. They okay. were formed out of slavery. Oh, so are you they saying were formed that formed out of um, the, so the colo are, colonial yes. era, <laughs> and even after col the, the independence of many African countries, yes. the colonial mentality in corporates has not changed. <laughs> the colonial mentality in the government has not changed, and trade unions okay. have just continued okay. uh, with the feathering the interests of workers but from you know, where they begin. You have raised an interesting point. <laughs> They were not formed in this era, Mr. Machimbira. Yes. So do they, s are, are they not saving the, the, the pre-colonial uh, agenda where they would think that the employer is just there to exploit us, uh, is just there to abuse us? Th thank you, Bernard. I, I want the nation to get me right. Okay. Business does not deny the relevance or the necessity All right. of trade So unions. maybe, can I, uh, can I just interject you there, Sam? Yes. He is saying trade unions are there to defend the rights. So for them to defend the rights, it means they are being abused or they are being uh, somehow uh, deprived of their actual rights. Is that so, sir? Precisely. So if you are saying we appreciate their existence, you are acknowledging that as a business, we deprive them of their rights. Look, you, you can't say that uh, scientifically. <laughs> Okay. But uh, I would appreciate a, a situation where we all accept the fact that uh, there's a dispute resolution mechanism. Okay. Even from the house where you're coming from, if you're married, okay. there can be a dispute between yourself and your wife. Yes, yes. Even yeah, with the I kids. <laughs> so, so for that reason, you want a structured mechanism of, of handling grievances, of handling disputes, but putting in place a mechanism for handling disputes and acknowledging the existence of a trade union is yes. not an admission that we are irresponsible employers. All right, all right, all right. So I think uh, I would like to borrow uh, from uh, Mr. Amitas that uh, the employment relationship is kind of a horizontal relationship where we have diver divergence, uh, divergent uh, interest. Uh, th that's where I, I have a problem. Okay. And that's where business is got a problem. Yes. We have agreed that the trade unions are there to advance the rights and interests of employees. Yes. But I think it's important for us to examine this basket of interest. What is incorporated in this basket of interest? <laughs> is productivity part of the, the, interest. the fruit basket of, of interest of employees? Okay. Then we begin to have a problem. I, I like don't to seem to get that, that yes. language All right. in, 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 in the advancement of the right and interest of the employee. The best way in a size business is concerned, the yes. best way to advance and protect the rights of an employee yes. is to make sure the going concern of the business is not compromised. Well, that's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think uh, from the definition of the trade union, we said it's an organization of workers. Yes. So workers are very clear that they are 
workers. Okay. <laughs> by forming unions, <laughs> yes, uh, we are very clear that uh, we are at work. Okay. So yes, productivity and any other language that business can come up with is well understood by labor. But we may differ on what it is. <laughs> and really the conceptual issues around <laughs> okay. all right, one all right, that. All right, that we can't yes. take away from yes. trade unions yes. is our primary responsibility and obligation to defend <laughs> protect the rights and interests of workers. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, I think uh, for more about this program, you can log on to our website, uh, which is www.labormatters.co.zw. With this, Labor Matters takes a short break. Welcome back to our second segment of Labor Matters. In our today's episode, we are discussing the state relevance and future of trade unions in Zimbabwe. Uh, from the first segment, uh, we have discussed and uh, seen that uh, trade unions are really necessary in an employment relationship due to the fact that the employment relationship has a horizontal type of a relationship where the uh, two parts, the employer and the employee, pursue different interests. So the trade union comes in to represent uh, the other party's interest. But now my question to you, sir, is uh, what contributions have the unions uh, have, uh, delivered to the uh, workers so far? I think uh, the contributions of uh, unions should not be restricted um, narrowly to the industry issues, workplace issues. Unions, and uh, maybe focusing on Zimbabwean unions, trade unions, they have contributed immensely in the liberation of the country. So if people say they are independent, they are definitely referring to the independence which unions uh, made a reality. So, so I say but if we go back to down to yes. the industry, yes, uh, industries in Zimbabwe and everywhere in the world are less uh, hazardous. People, we are recording less deaths, still uh, alarming, but less than previously, and all that is through the work of the unions in terms of uh, advocating for a health and safe working environment. We also have seen um, in the workplace uh, better working conditions. You talk about the eight hour uh, day, working day. All that came through trade unions. You have seen how dangerous a workplace without a trade union is in terms of issues like harassment, abuse, and bullying. And uh, we are seeing reductions in those issues. So generally, the trade unions have been playing their role in the industry. And you have also seen corporates who have gone for 20, 30, or even 100 years. They have only survived because of the industrial harmony that workers and through their unions have brought in the workplace. We come in and okay. uh, again and to do social dialogue for industrial harmony. Well, uh, that's fine, it's a very uh, a good point, but do I not understand uh, much on the liberation part of the point? You can't Well, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Brennan. I, we, we are not downplaying the contribution that uh, trade unions have, have made to industry in general. Yes. Uh, but we also run a risk of over decorating them or over glorifying them without uh, looking at uh, <coughs> their blind spots and uh, how those blind spots have actually uh, caused some uh, challenges to businesses today. Okay. And I would like to highlight some few issues that we think uh, if unions can help us address, then they become truly relevant. Oh, that's it, it, is, it is a settled position uh, that uh, trade unions, well, some trade unions, have actually become disruptive to industry. Oh. Okay. At a time you want to be driving productive, at a time you want to be working, at a time you want to focus on corporate culture, I'm not too sure of their understanding of democracy. Okay. Because it appears they've migrated from democracy to democracy. <laughs> and naturally, 
naturally. <laughs> yes. That is, that, is a, that, is the, that is a good way okay. to make an employee lose okay. uh, what they would ordinarily benefit in an employment relationship. <laughs> or, I don't want to take sides here. But <laughs> can, I, can I make maybe okay, get okay. another point? Okay, I, I'm continue. looking at the, the disruption that trade unions have caused in industry. Yes. Possibly because of lack of uh, a code of professional conduct to guide their operations. I'm sure Mr. Mutasa today may confess in front of the nation that uh, there is evidence of unprofessional conduct by certain trade unions. You talked of democracy. <laughs> Let me quote. I'm quoting. <laughs> talked of how you being democracy instead of being uh, democratic. Also on the same point on democracy, I've actually seen uh, some unionists, uh, some uh, leaders of unions, actually uh, refusing uh, to uh, let go of their position. So which democrats are these unions? Are you, okay, are your unions are preaching, let me say? I, I think we can't um, characterize, uh, give a general characterization of trade unions okay. on the basis of one or two uh, dead apples in a basket. Okay. So there is um, no general position or empirical evidence to support that unions are not democratic. I think uh, by any stretch of imaginations, employers can't say they are democratic. Okay. They are boards of directors, they don't <laughs> tell people what they are doing. We've had many scandals. Yes. We've get, had the salary get scandals. Yes. And if that is the product of democrats uh, from <laughs> corporates, then it leaves a lot to be desired. But we have got unions that have survived for many years, 200 years, 100 years, many centuries. And that can only be testimony that they've survived because of the democratic nature of trade union. But what we can deduce from what they are saying is that uh, they want an opportunity to operate without an oversight. They want an opportunity to go back to uncivilized ways of handling labor relations. You can't complain about trade unions' operations. Our operations are clearly provided for in the Constitution, in the Labor Act, and in various other statutes. So we, in most of these statutes, they are acts of parliament, and some of them have been negotiated between the business and the labor. So trade unions do not operate willy-nilly. They operate on the basis of international conventions, which have been accepted by international business, on the basis of local laws, which have been approved by the parliament and accepted by everyone else. All right. So can you, uh, can you in short say, are the employees satisfied the service? We, we can safely say that, but obviously we always try to <laughs> improve <laughs> on the service. When there's a bad, there's something. <laughs> well, I think it's an interesting point from Mr. Mtasa. Uh, but for, for your views, comments about this program, you can contact the executive producers on the email address displayed on the screen, which is info at labormatters.co.zw. Or you can call us on 0718-897-586. With this, we take a commercial break. Welcome back to our third and final segment of our program, Labor Matters. In our today's episode, we are discussing the state, relevance, and future of trade unions in Zimbabwe. If you are just joining us, you are not lost. Today, with me in the studio is Mr. Mtasa from ZCTU and Mr. Machimbira from PCG International. Uh, from our previous segment, I have picked that Mr. Mtasa said employees are content and they are happy with the safe delivery of uh, trade unions in the country. I, I've got a point to make there. Okay. The, the viewers are watching. Okay. And chances are high, they are also employees. All right, so are you satisfied? It, 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 it would be misleading <laughs> yes. for anyone to claim that employees are happy. Okay. These employees, okay. they come to us and uh, they are giving us applications, notices of withdrawal from their trade unions. All right. One then wonders why a happy person would withdraw from a happy marriage. Oh, 
I think he, he's probably, probably <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay. We've had a um, number of um, workers out of fear from victimization by employers. Not correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, 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 especially <laughs> after the Zua judgment of that last year. Be, that yes. We have be been correct. victimized. We have been threatened to be given three months notices. Oh, we have okay. been trying to, to withdraw from unions. That and on that point, correct. I think is probably correct. <laughs> and what we need to understand is we are not saying as trade unions, we, we are giving excellent service. Okay. We are saying under the circumstances, we believe that with our union density of 14.8, according to the Labor Force Survey of 2014, okay. which compares favorably.